Hello everyone, today our Fast Fight Backs is on hydralazine. I want to talk a little bit about this medication. This is a very common medication that's given in the hospital. So if you're a nurse or a nursing student, you may have seen this given PRN. It's typically going to be given when the systolic blood pressure is greater than 160. And it helps to decrease the blood pressure. It is a potent uh, medication, so it's important to understand. Now, a couple of different things. I'm going to go over these five different things here and kind of explain a little bit more the basics of what you need to know when you're giving this medication and also for things like NCLEX or if you're just in general trying to learn about hydralazine. Number one, we're going to specifically talk about the IV form here, but the onset is typically within five to 20 minutes and it peaks at about one to two hours. Now, with this, it's important to understand that if the patient's not improving, in other words, if their blood pressure is not coming down, Often you may need to either um, call the on-call provider and let them know that, hey, this is not really doing its job. They may need to switch to different medication or that you may need to look for other sources or causes for the elevated blood pressure, such as pain. Maybe pain needs to be controlled. Number two, even though CBC is not regularly monitored on this medication, it is important to understand that it can potentially cause a, a decrease in the hemoglobin, the WBCs, the red blood cells, and also even platelets as well. So if someone already has a low hemoglobin or WBCs or all the other that I said, then they, this may drop it even further. So it's important to understand that. Number three. So when, if a patient develops any kind of muscle aches, joint aches, sore throat, rash, fever, this needs to be reported immediately because this actually can cause a lupus-like syndrome. Now, in about 15, 16 years of practicing, I've never seen this, but I do think that this is definitely something that um, you need to be aware that can potentially happen. Number four, one of the most common side effects from hydralazine is, is headache. Now, to kind of remember the side effect, Think of it this way. This is a vasodilator. Hydralazine is a, vas a potent vasodilator. And so what that does is it, it dilates the blood vessels and, and that's what causes the decrease in blood pressure. So most vasodilators, medications that are va vasodilators, are gonna, they're gonna tend to cause headaches. If you think of something just opposite, like a vasoconstrictor, like, let's say caffeine, that's actually something that's often used to treat headaches, um, and that's because it vasoconstricts. And so if you can remember it that way, that vasoconstrictors can sometimes help with headaches, and vasodilators often um, contribute to headaches. Number five, avoid if the patient has coronary artery disease. This can increase their risk to have a myocardial infarction, so it's important to understand that. Well, if you like this kind of video, make sure to hit the like button and also comment below if you have any other Fast Five Facts topics that you want me to go over specifically. And then also subscribe to our channel and we'll see you later.